what does transcend mean? I mean, it, it, uh, how, how would you, how did I say it, this uh, at Dugan? How did I say it in, 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 in German? I don't know. Is I mean, I thought that transcend. Transcendent. Yeah. yeah, so it's the same word as in English. Yeah, exactly. So what does it mean? Do you, do you know? I think I think the line of uh, the Godofsky humanity, maybe. No, but I can transcend. I, ca I can transcend not just difficulties. I can transcend uh, uh, something which is a, a, a pain. I can transcend to put myself uh, above it. Mm -hmm. Transcend means to get beyond. You transcend the mountain to go to the other side. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he named these pieces. Um, uh, I mean, he no, he composed these pieces so that when you conquer. When you, you understand when you conquer the piece, it's difficulties, you go over it, the difficulty, so that you find music. It's, it's, I mean, you know, he, he, if I would write something like this, I would, uh, uh, I don't know if how I could say it. He, he, he really put these compositions, not the difficulty, but not only the difficulty, but also the psychological things that are happening while not only learning but performing. Now there are two pieces out of all the etudes that are not named. Mm -hmm. There's a prelude, there is a volet, there's Mazeppa and uh, uh, yeah. and all, all of those are named. Why do you think they are named? Well, Mazeppa is, uh, uh, is, is after a uh, painting or a story, so there is a story behind it. Yeah. The list, unlike Chopin, really more often than not w wanted to have an inspiration from something. Yeah. Uh, the pelerinage, the pilgrimage to Italy um, or Switzerland, of all places, which has the least amount of uh, uh, how can I say, fine art. Mm -hmm. Not that it, uh, the Swiss are not musically minded or art, but they just a country that has not produced a, um, you know, a Goethe or a Schiller or a major composer. I don't know any, do you know any Swiss major composers? <laughs> no, I, you know, uh, people who seem to be on holiday all the time. <laughs> 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 but, uh, and yet he has two books. Well, uh, you know, his newfound love escaped from the together. They escaped from Paris because of the uh, scandal, and they went to, the, to different parts of of the country to get away from everything. And it's not bad to get away from anything to go to Switzerland, but of all things, he's inspired by Switzerland. The mountains, why not? I mean, wonderful. And in Italy, the, he was inspired by uh, paintings and as well as uh, poetry. In those days, they didn't have television, so they sat down and discussed silly things like a poem. You know, we should do that more often ourselves. But these attitudes are different types. They were they were personal statements of what the piano can do. He hasn't named this one in F sharp. No. Wonder why? Has it got an A? Have you ever thought about it? I think not because I don't know what it would like. When you think about it, it means that you have the well, I my I, I haven't talked to this, so don't misunderstand. And I just I thought about it. Uh, maybe he wants you to come up with your own heading. Maybe, maybe he wants you to be uh, inspired by the music itself to to go behind it, go behind it, 
to find what could be, um, what could it be to you? What picture does it bring? Does it bring you a memory of something? Um, I mean, he basically he leaves it to you, what you want to name it. Uh, Debussy named, you know, the preludes, but he put it at the end in a way trying to minimize the influence. So he supposed that you can go study the whole thing and only then realize, oh, this is supposed to be what it is. But of course we know ahead of time what it is. You have, have you ever thought of a picture or, or something or something in your life that could come close to what it is uh, or naming this piece? Uh, not words, one word. Mazeppa is one word, or prelude is another word, or that, that's not right. And I, I'm aiming at one thing, and that is to get you to be, again, uh, when you are committed to something, you play it differently. At the moment, I feel that you're playing the notes, and you are very musical, and everything is fine, but I, I, it wouldn't go too far in a competition and it wouldn't go too far in a um, in even in the I, in a recital even though you play it well uh, until you're committed until you know what's behind the trans to transcend into something of your own words that will describe this piece well I tell you what I am thinking all the time and this is uh, of all the pieces that I know the uh, list major this has more operatic uh, features than anything else. The drama of, uh, of it, and then you have this wonderful soaring melody. It's, it's actually more Verdi than Verdi could have done, <laughs> you know, in my opinion. So I it could be any opera that you can think of. But maybe you can r think of your own opera. But do you understand that yeah, it's very, very yeah. important to commit yourself to something that you uh, believe in. If you believe in it, then you will play it differently. Um, yeah, there are a few things. Can you put it up there for me? There are a few things that, uh, that we can improve on. One of the things is that this, the first two measures come back several times. Yes? So the first one, and the second one are different. They are one. You can you see it? Yeah. What is the difference? No, no, no. I, I meant the first two measures, this and this. Yes. So th there, it has a, a crescendo and decrescendo. The first one doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then can you go to the next w next page? When, where is the next one? There. Yes, that has only a decrescendo. Yeah. So that's three different ways of doing it, yes? Mm -hmm. Can you turn? Is there any more? No, no, ahead. Here it comes. There. So that's a decrescendo too. Mm -hmm. Yes? I don't think there's any more. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Is that? Go on. Go on. No, I, but uh, this, yeah, da, 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 da. no, no, the, the very first passage, the first two measures, I thought it was only three times, but maybe I'm wrong. No, no, three times. Three times. Yes. And each time, at least we know, so, sorry, four times, four one, times two, three. Yeah. So you have at least three different ways you have to play it. <coughs> yeah? So that's the first thing, believe it or not, that I look out for um, in actual performance to make the differences. Yes? Now, can you play it very slowly for me, please? Yeah. Yes, what I hear is ta 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 uh, what is the difficulty of that? Oh, play it not the well, you pl play it inside each note, yes, your fingers, but the top notes must make a melody, because otherwise you can't... That's what comes out, right? 
sure. And it the, and you play each note with different hand, so that you have to. Yes, but it has to be even. The first time it has to be no diminuendo or decrescendo and even. The next time, the third time is so each time you are required to play a similar technical problem with a different dynamic problem, which is not easy to do. We are talking about transcending yes. into what it is. Can you do it once more? Do you mind the piano, the first first one, first one, but very slowly, like you are playing every note. Very good. And you know what you're doing now that you don't do when you're playing fast? Preparing. The problem is that I watch you play, and, and the, the when you're going, da, 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 you have to go down there mm -hmm. for the beat. And you, too late. As a result, it already is, has a hiccup in it. The evenness is gone. And uh, he really wants a legato there. That's why he puts that line. Mm -hmm. I often ask students, what does this line mean? There is a line above. And many students say that's a phrase. It's not a phrase. Composers never give you a phrase, never show you a phrase, because everybody makes a phrase of their own. But that's a legato marking. Mm -hmm. So I instead of having a ta 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 do 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 should be real legato all the time. Which would always, for me, lead me to think of an opera that's tragic. And F sharp, uh, and, and uh, not F sharp, but uh, F minor is tragic by all means. And this is not a happy piece in my mind. Is it happy for you? No, no of course not. So can you play it again? <laughs> it's better, but I can hear sort of air between the notes. Well, that's the difficulty. I can't help that for you. <laughs> Somehow change the touch when you are down or when you're in, when you're playing here. There you change the touch. That I don't understand why you should. Don't. Don't. Bravo. Did you hear the difference? It was one line. Yes. So what did you have to do to do that? What did you do in your hands that you made it? No, okay, not take the touch, but also what you have to do is to concentrate that each, play the first chord in your left hand. Yes, that means that the balance is on this note, yes. And the balance changes as you go along because sometimes you have to play in the black and out away from the black. So it's, if you really analyze it to anybody, it's one of the horrendously difficult things to do. You've got three notes in be each hand, and each hand is built differently. So here you're playing with the second finger, here you're playing with your fifth finger. Mm -hmm. And yeah, well, you say yes, and you've been practicing it, but one of the things that you have to do often is, even if you know the piece, to go back to the rudiment, the fundamental e uh, moment, if you like, or the bottom, and analyze yourself so that you can understand what you're doing instead of just doing it, mm -hmm. uh, which is teaching yourself. Um, so this is one, one of the most difficult aspects of this. It starts off with the most difficult thing, the, the whole thing. To me, this is, to me, one of the, is the most difficult. Mm -hmm. To you, maybe it's something else, but it's, it's the most open and clear-cut uh, um, feeling if you, if you have technique. And it's an introduction. Can we go to the next sentence? Bottom, bottom, yeah. No, I, I don't want to hear da 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 pa da pa da da. No, I want to hear the F. Pa 
sort of a very sorrowful moment. It, it, it sounds very happy if you go ta ta dum ta ta dum ta ta dum So do, you, see, you have to aim your arm to the, the, the F. That's it. Yes, now can you play it again too? Ta da So it's not ta da ta da So you do ta da sad it can be like a bird a sad bird singing I mean the oiseau triste of Ravel is something similar this plaintive call of of uh, sadness and then it goes further one step further which you have as a, 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 a habit of stopping on that note it's not da 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 ti dum. Can you try from there? Mm. <laughs> You're doing the opposite. Transcending, what I'm trying to do is to be transcending into what the essence of the music is. More than, uh, not that you can't play it, but you're not showing it. This idea of you can hear it. Then it's not an accent because it goes. This is still legato. Much more plaintive, much more sorrowful. Can you make this idea? Yes, you don't have to do legato, it's just that the arm has to go. No, you're traveling like that. I travel Yes. No, don't accent I don't think that you can be happy with the sound you're producing of going not bad, not accented. Yes, I don't know if you can hear what we're doing. Yeah. We're bringing out, maximizing what the the melody, the essence of the music. To me, it, you 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 played it well, but it didn't didn't break my heart. <laughs> you know, I can I really can hear this sort of. Try it now as it's written. No, don't accent that now. Don't accent that now. Please. Consistently goes the first two have accent and then nothing, no accent. Accent, nothing, just like here. So it really is the this this call of <laughs> he changes instead of going he comes down. It's not a big deal, it's not changed too much, but it's changed direction. Can you go from here? Why did I do that? Well, that's 
just a staccato. It's, it's not, not an accent. No. It's just more staccato than third staccato. And here, ya, pa, 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 pa. It just wouldn't make sense to accent that. That's not musical in my mind. Then this is not so staccato because of the portamento. Do it once again. Again, if you can look it up, the each time is different. Here you have the crescendo to the first beat of the next measure, but there's no crescendo in the in the ramming up. Yes, can you try it? So, where is the uh, what is uh, important? I think is the cleanliness of the left hand. Can you play the left hand form? Yeah, pa, 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 pa. and what's the next one? But not accented. Pa, da, da, da. Unknown to you, perhaps you do it, or maybe you do it. It's pa, da, da, da. details what makes the piece really phenomenal. Liszt absolutely knew what he was doing. So can you do it again? And da 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 There's an accent on the da 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 joined together by one ligament, by one muscle. And when you play, the most natural thing is go rolling. But they're not even. You have to go play it. You have to play every note. That's it. That's the test of technique. Even Chiang does that. And you have to understand that you have to face that note. And notes 
then it it's much more exciting. Then, you know, and of course you have the left hand, the real legato, real legato, not. Uh, you know. that way you it really the hand wants to curve upwards when you curve the thumb inwards you're going downward and it's always down you're doing this that's why it's not legato Some people play the thumb here, and some people play it here. It depends on, the, but I, I don't know if you noticed it. Uh, you, you see, I play it. Mm -hmm. I curve. I curve. And that also, if you curve the thumb, it prevents you from playing the thumb from here, but only play it from here. Real legato. And then I could criticize you until you hate me because <laughs> <laughs> because it's legato and it is it is the question mark is especially here and the question Then comes the very difficult one, which is even worse than the first one, making diminuendo. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. Whatever you do. It's not that loud, but it's loud enough so you can make a diminuendo, and it should not all of a sudden change color. It's one color making the uh, diminuendo. All right, well, we've done this, and you do the left hand quite well there, so I won't bother you with that. Uh, let's start um, the main melody here. <laughs> something like yum, it's definitely not good enough. It's pi legato. Pi yadam. This difference if you do yum, you actually, with your action hand, you make that note louder. I don't know if you realize it. Uh, can I ask you to do, to do the left hand? It, sound, it might sound silly, but when I used to practice it, I love the left hand. It has a lot of, lot of um, uh, colors in it as it moves through the piano. It's wonderful how, how he, uh, and above that you have a melody that stays still practically. You know, I mean, it's only one note. One note. Well, there's a chord. Yes. So uh, it has a. If you bring the left hand not as a individual note, but see if you can, like a harmony. 
sends you down. The second finger when you go up wants to go up. So you're fighting against getting there on time. You have to change that yeah. or uh, otherwise it doesn't. Now we got another problem. Can you play just can you play it together? Sorry. Okay, fine. Now play this one. and this two that you yeah. played. Are they the same? Not piano. No, 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 it's not piano. That has a, not it's, uh, I mean, it's, uh, this is loud. It, it hasn't changed anything. The notes have changed. This is E flat and that's D sharp. Don't you think there's a difference? Everything here is written in flats. Everything here is written in sharp. You notice it? No, it doesn't piano the same. No. How can you how can you say that? You give this to a violinist, he would exactly know yeah. what to do. Yeah. A yeah. singer, a clarinetist, yes, but you can do it on the piano too. It just means a different color. I'm not asking you to change the note by going in there with a uh, you know the, the strings, but you have to believe that there is a difference between an E flat and a C and a D sharp. If you don't, then why do composers do it? Chopin does it all the time. Even Beethoven does it. So there must be some reason that he, they do it. Uh, if not, then uh, I mean you're going against history. Uh, there must be something that you have to do. All of this has to be darker. Sharper means always brighter sound. Now it's up to you to show that and how you show it, but it has to be shown. There's no question. It's not the same. Uh, it's not. You can do it dynamically, perhaps even, but something has to be done. Try it once again. <laughs> accent it's consistent here and it's it consistently all this uh, an accent is not only accent but it's timing This is what 
robot moves. Not you doing this, pa, ti, ta, tam. This helps you. The elbow helps you to put it into position to play. <laughs> sound will change because at the moment ta -ta, you're doing this you can see that you are you striking the sound with a tremendous amount of tension ta -di, ta -di, ta -di, da -dum. the sound will change so what was the next section what was the difference between what is the difference between <coughs> here these two and these two There's no crescendo here, but there's crescendo there. It's by sub it's yeah, inverting yeah. it. Well, you want to try? you get to the bar, you play the note, you can do whatever you like. But don't break the pop and the momentum cannot be broken. changes constantly happening. Liszt does it for us, we just have to observe what he does. Yes, 
one of the things that I feel in your practicing is that you learn the piece and you just reinforce whatever you learn. There is a time in all of the uh, process of learning a piece when you go back and say, am I doing the right thing? For instance, play the left hand just here. here. Where is the accent? There's no accent there. It is a harmony that you're doing. If you think about it. That's all. It's a, it's a, the basis of what you play in the right hand. But you you got used to the idea of yum, 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 yum. you just got into a bad habit. Now, how are you going to catch that? By going back and say, again, looking at the music instead of just playing it. I'm just saying it for your own good because 99% of the people who you're going to play this to, if you do for exam or jury or whatever it is, know this piece intimately. We struggle with it too. And when you struggle with it, and I, and I teach it all the time, I know everything about it. All the, you know what a pitfall is? All the things you can go un, uh, down with. And this is it. Sil silly thing like that will make me feel, oh, he's really not interested in reading this, the text. This play is like a harmony just there. <laughs> Yes? Believe me, that will help you more than what you were doing before. Alright? Now, let's go to the next section. Yes, the, the, here, the problem is, in all of this, that the first note is by itself, then you got four notes and then you got that. And I have to hear all of it separately. But there is a melodic line there that has to be Based on everything is based on this. Uh, yes, so um, yeah, exactly. And if I don't, if he doesn't remember, if I don't remember that, then you're not doing me any. No, you're not doing the music at, at all justice. All right, this is the same, so we don't have to do that. This, I, I was fascinated how you conquered this idea. I love the idea that you didn't play it too loud, but when you become too soft, that just is frustrating in many ways because this is an opera if you want to sing it and all the time you made one mistake that is an accent this is movement and then don't go the yum um, dum um, sorry yes it's e, yes that's right e, do, uh, 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 the, you, you, it's always e, do, dum. E, sense of the word. It's an accent of delay. So it's distorting the Da-da-da-da-da! 
talking to a friend and you get to the top of the mountain and then suddenly you feel that you are tired. This is the top. Why did you stop there? It, 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 to me it doesn't make sense. You work so hard. Desperado means you're desperate about something. It's not easy. All of this is one phrase going to all the way. It's not it's not you're gonna stop here, then you're gonna stop there, and then another one here. This is all one line. I, I don't particularly, I mean, look, it's, uh, you're quite at liberty to do what you wish, but all of this is working from there, it's getting there, and this is the top of the mountain. And you have to go, and in a way, go down. That's the whole point of it, of working yourself up. Now, if you stop there, it means that it's not the end. Somehow, it, it doesn't make sense. Can you go from somewhere here? Dee -dee -dee -dee. Yeah, sure. Pom -pom. you get into a pattern, then the ear of the listener can understand what you're doing. But if you start immediately fast, we don't know that it's a chromatic scale. Da, 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 da. So take your time at the beginning. Do you understand? Makes a lot of sense, otherwise it's just haywire. Now we've got a little bit of a problem here. Can I ask you to play the left hand alone? eighth note, I mean, and you just go You don't hear a melody there? Well, yeah, so make sure that instead of hearing a thick sound, I hear and especially, especially when you get to here. This is yom. That's a harmony note. Here's a melody. Da, 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 da. Me harmony. Pom. These are melody. Not only the right hand has the melody, but the left hand. So it's very, very particular in how you orchestrate your fingers. So the melody has to be also in your left hand. Can you try it? Because you do the right hand. Well, by the way, this is also from ta da pa da pa da pa I can understand. Even soft. 
not giving your other melody. Especially, this is so heroically list when you go da 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 da, bum bum finally. The first time. <laughs> to do something with it, and a lot of people do, each time you get a little faster. Even then, you can't play that, that fast tempo. Mm -hmm. So, I try to pinpoint the musicality uh, of the piece. It's a tremendously exciting piece when it's played with, not loud, but with lots and lots of details. And we know that, that um, this particular set of pieces, the transcendental letters have gone through three changes. You know that. The first one, when he was young, was practically impossible to play. I mean, he just made it impossible. Only he could play. Then he realized none of his students could play, so he made a reduction of the difficulty. The second reduction was uh, the most difficult. Yeah, sorry, that's right. It got more difficult the first. The first that second one was more difficult, and then he finally came to this one. Yeah. yeah. So I, I Liszt really li lived, relived these pieces. When you relive a piece or rewrite a piece, you make sure that everything is there. And you can see how he changes, and nothing is the same. There's no repeat. And believe it, again and again I say this, we all go through these pieces ourselves as pianists. You're not the first one to play it, <laughs> let's put it this way. And we are looking for uh, a person who's playing this, who does what it is stated there in their own way. If you do a little more crescendo, that's fine, or a little less, or even, I would actually like very much what you did here when you refused to get louder, and it was really it's this whole page before that. It was fantastic. I wouldn't, I couldn't do that. I, I want to make it a little more singing. It doesn't matter, but you at least, you, you, you did something, but you have to do this, uh, these accents. It's not That's why the accent is there. It's, it's, it's general knowledge that accents usually are not just accents. Y if you play Chopin, it's, it's not. And Beethoven puts accent for not just accents, but also timing. It's a timing device. How else can you show it? How else? You tell me, how else can you show to take the liberty of just holding it back a little bit and then moving forward? How to play the left hand when you went to Oh, left hand does its own. Don't worry. You catch up. This, if you wait a little bit, you don't have to, you've been studying it to make sure that you are together there. But you know, four against six, who knows if you are doing it a little faster. It's the, it's the gesture, it's the musical gesture is more important than being mathematically correct four against six. Has your teacher divided an apple against six and then four and say, hey, you put it together? No. My mind did when I had to learn two against three. The best part was I couldn't understand it, but the, I was about, what, seven or eight, and I liked eating the apple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I mean, you know, you to a half an apple, and then you have three, and then it looked all the same to me. I just ate it. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that those are liberties. Those you, what you did was your way of playing it. I like that, but we still demand that you observe all the details of, of the piece because they're numerous, really numerous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.